Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Dragon's Den. I am Dragon's Fury, aka Show, aka Shadow, aka many other names where I've been doing this a while. As usual, we have Infernal with us. So and we are just gonna hop right into it after a little housekeeping. Um Thanks. Just thanks all around. Uh we are picking up some speed we are getting more views and we were able to activate subscriptions um so that's cool and so we couldn't do that until we hit a certain point and you guys got us there um so if you would like to even uh you know no would like to know more get more uh content in various avenues uh and you got a couple you know a couple of dollars about five dollars to spare for a month doesn't even have to be for multiple months just you know five dollars for a month you get uh some bonus stuff you get some extra episodes that are locked behind the subscriber wall uh you can see it's those ones that are listing in our episodes that are have that little lock if you want to unlock that and it's only five dollars for the month uh, that gives you access to those episodes as well as the discord um i'm still working out how to get people access to that uh so once you subscribe i believe i'm able to see your username so we'll probably work out something i'm thinking a special code or whatever uh because the the people we have in there i already know so it was easier to add them um but as we pick up speed the i want to be able to add everybody else uh smoothly to some extent so it'll probably be like a username code thing and you just message me on uh instagram saying i'm such and such this is my code and then i add you into discord with whatever your discord username is uh yeah, the in the code is toes and the code the code may be toes i don't know that that might be funny um, but then I feel like we would get a bunch of randos coming in oh, who didn't, well, yeah, who did pick, but we'll get to that R when we get there. All right, fine, giant toes. <laughs> giant toes, that's lawyers. Um, if you know, you know, if not, well, go, go, uh, listen to the rest of the episodes and maybe you can be in the know. Um, also we have photos, um, and, uh, depending on when you listen, there will be the, uh, vlog from our trip to, uh, Megacon Orlando. So we... Took a trip to Orlando, Florida for four days, and we uh, had some fun at the convention, uh, did some cosplays, uh, saw a lot of cosplays, uh, interacted with a bunch of people, you know, partied, you know, some, a good time. So if you want to share in that experience of uh, what that was, uh, or you're interested in various cons yourself and, you know, would like an insider look into that, then you can, you know hop on the uh subscribe train it will only be five dollars versus however pricing for conventions go especially multiple days uh and you turn on your it's not for you um, i feel like i'd rather spend five to get some insider information than like 55 and not like it that's just me i mean uh, i feel like that would only happen if you went on saturday for your first day well yeah but like i feel like that's what most people would do they would go on a weekend because you know yeah, work so, and adulting for those listening if, if you have not been to a con before do not go on saturdays because those are always the busiest days well, yeah those are pretty rough or any of the other days um or if you're if you're going to go on one of those days uh hope that you're already there because it's not as bad if you're already there it is horrendous if you're coming into it and that's your first day um so yeah so we uh definitely want to share that with you um and uh the subscriptions would uh help us continue in that endeavor as well uh, i do hope to reach a point where we can uh, do panels at these conventions we can just kind of like travel around and uh, meet our fans and you actually get to see what we look like because uh, most likely we don't have or will not have video episodes for a significant portion of time um I think it's just better to have like kind of a ethereal voice if you will in the background and just kind of let your imagination run wild with what we may or may not look like la, 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 la. <laughs> i can only imagine what comes with people's imagination with that sound alone 
because it it was just memes for me. And so he lucked out. So Infernal lucked out. I told him the topic early again. Um, so this, I'm trying to make this a trend. I'm trying to make it the trend that I tell him ahead of time instead of day of recording of what we're going to talk about. But also I just like to see what his general reaction is to whatever came to my mind in probably, you know, five to ten minutes before we sat down to rec- record. Um and whether I remember, uh, that's always the other issue. <laughs> that's also the other issue. Um, as he informed me that this topic may be a personal attack to him, I was not meant to be that, um, but yeah, if the shoe fits. <laughs> so in short, I'm not sorry. And that topic being is hoarding in games. We all have done it. And... I want to talk about why do we do it? Why do we hoard in games? And I'm not talking about useful hoarding. I'm not saying let's have 150,000 healing potions and health and sh- uh, shield Everything resources. Has a purpose. Everything does have a purpose, but it doesn't need to be in your inventory. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> yeah, I know you do, and that's why we're <laughs> doing this. Uh, so. That being that being said, I, I will give the floor to you so you can uh, proverbially plead your case of why this uh, this keeps happening in the various games that you uh, you have uh, storage capacity in. Well, in most games, I really wish they would increase storage capacities because that is honestly lovely. Um, but I mean, I guess I can use one of the most recent examples with ESO is. I always reach my capacity because I always find new things and I'm just like, oh, this looks nice. Oh, this looks nice. You have reached capacity. I'm like, but I don't want to lose the nice thing. Now, are these about, nice things you know, anything that can be used in the immediate time frame? No. <laughs> and there lies the problem, folks. I think of the future. <laughs> that never comes. I said that, actually. It is, it is, a, it is, it's obscene. And I'm not saying I'm innocent of this. I've done it as well, but I know why I do it. I do it out of laziness. I will collect a bunch of things that, and it's not, ooh, new thing. It's a, ooh, I need this thing ooh, to either like upgrade or. Uh, to make something else that I can't do yet and then when I can make that thing I use up the resources I need to make the thing and then I'm stuck with the fact that I have far too many resources and eventually I will use them up but of course I'm still replenishing as I'm using so it gets to a point where it's just all there and then just like it's just It's at a certain point, it becomes more work to get rid of it all than it is to just leave it there. I feel like one good example of that would be Play and Soul. Because there are so many things that they've added over the years. I'm just like, I have no idea what to use this for. So it's literally just sitting in my inventory. It's like, I'll figure out the purpose at some point. (laughs) That is the only one I would say is not hoarding in your case because of exactly that. It's they've added so much stuff. Uh for in content and because we have our technical you know in contact characters we gain access to those things but because we ourselves are not at in-game content we don't know what the deuce to use it for and so i don't i don't see that necessarily as hoarding because usually especially in blade's case it will tell you what it's for we just have no idea what that means it'll be like oh use this for the like key is like use this for the key in like mushin's tower on level four well we don't know how to get to mushin's tower level four (laughs) and so we're just like but it's a key for something and we know you know we know what mushin's tower is we've been to mushin's tower but like we haven't been before it, and the many of places that he's gotten to <laughs> by accident um he's gotten to places by accident that the literal only way to get him out of it was to kill him and that took time yeah 
bonus points if you're if you uh, know what I'm referencing. The specific thought that I w- I was with you when you discovered a location on the map, and the only way to get you out was because we- was to kill you. I mean, I think it went up, we glitched into the background of Destiny uh, IO. Yep, that's what I was thinking about. Yep. The other thing that popped in my head was when I got locked in with the uh, strike boss. Okay, that was deserved. That was totally our fault. That was gonna that. When you listen to the details of that encounter, nothing good was gonna come of it. it. That was bound to happen. The fact that it didn't happen sooner is the surprising part. Um, yeah, I don't think we've uh, told our listeners what happened during that strike. <laughs> We no, we didn't. So I, I think we can share that. That seems like a fun story. Um, so let's see. For our uninitiated to Destiny, it was a strike, which is just basically a harder than normal mission, but not like too hard. It's kind of like your, I would say it's like your mid level to kind of hard, depending on. Uh, status. Yeah, I'd, I'd say medium because nightfalls are when it becomes hard. Right, but those are still considered strikes, though. Um, they're yep. just like special strikes. Uh, so yeah, medium, intermediate for like you, you haven't quite hit in game yet, and it would be a a mission that's basically kind of like a side story to like the main story of when that mission came out. So we were doing one that we knew very well was like super easy it was essentially it was the first one wasn't it it was one of the first it was the pyramid uh, um so this was the very first one so we knew all the mechanics and everything and the version we were doing gave us a buff on damage of a certain type solar being the type which is just you know one of the three that's the sun rain down and that of course applied to all type lakes it wasn't a specific type so it could come from your abilities as your character so grenades your melee if it was launchable stuff like that and it also went towards weapons and there was a particular weapon that was solar base that is a very very powerful when uh, used in general, because it's it's a high output damage weapon, uh, it's a linear fusion rifle, right? Yes. Is that it's yeah, and it uh, was an exotic class, which means it was a special version, like special version weapon of the linear fusion rifle class of weapons. So you already know it was one of the big dogs. So we had those because it's like, oh, we we'll just do this. We have that. So we're running through doing the, the, the mission, and we get to the final boss. Now, as most gamers know, uh, bosses have phases. So you go through, you, you phase your first one. It's either one or two. In this case, was it's technically four. Three location. Three? I thought it was three. Three panels and then one, two, three, and then four moving around. Yeah, I guess four would be the final phase. Um, so there is a, and you can easily look this up on Google if for my visual learners. The setup has it where you fight the minions, the ads, and the, the, you know, the mobs of enemies and it set where you started off you can damage the boss outright when it first spawns you can get some you know get some damage off and then it starts the encounter part where it goes into a shield can't be attacked and you have to deactivate the shield by you know standing in various platforms while protecting yourself you know classic game mechanics to bring down the defenses of the boss or to weaken the boss whatever it may be now normally you cannot put out that much damage when he first encounters 
And the reason for that, because at max, you can have three people attacking at once, and it's a boss. So it's not supposed to go down in one go. So we were like, let's do a thing. So we, in our infinite wisdom, decided it was a good idea to use the strongest solar type weapon we owned which was named sleeper stimulant again you can look it up for my visual learners and we blasted it when it showed up we did so much damage that it kicked it to the health bar of its final phase Here's the problem. Just because we skipped the health bar to the final phase doesn't mean we got to skip to the final phase. <laughs> so we are going through <laughs> it. its normal thing. Unfortunately, while doing this and going through the platforms and we were doing another damage step, I don't fully remember how you ended up in this situation. So, all right. So I'll take over from here. Uh, this was bef uh, this was a different run from when we learned that we could keep the boss from being in its room by doing too much damage. Um, this is one of the runs where we didn't get to that point. We because we had learned don't let the boss get low. Um, so we took about half, and me and my shenanigans i because we know where the boss is going to teleport to so i run over to it to give it a nice little love tap with a punch i'm on the warlock so it's more of a slap what i did not know is that when the walls go up you can't get out so i literally slap the boss turn around and there's the cage I was literally locked in the cage with the beast. No way in. No way out. Yep. And at this time, I'm freaking out. I'm yelling at Dragon and our fellow fire team member, Sacred, to let me out. We it did. Took little, it, it took a little bit, though. Um, thank God I had a specific exotic for the warlock called the stag, where if you get critically wounded... Because in Destiny 2, you have a r healing rift. I literally look like a, a bee trapped in a cage, constantly flying around to avoid the boss from killing me. Drop the heal, just get a little bit, and then go flying again. So, uh, if you ever want to see a pixie in a cage, uh, just imagine that. And so... Now, what made this just a completely and utterly ridiculous wasn't the fact, it was the fact that he's locked in there, but now we're down a person, so we can't clear as fast, so he's in there, in there, and... <laughs> yep. Oh. oh, and also the fun part is, uh, the following week after this happened, they patched it so that if you are in the cage, it kicks you out. Kicks you out, which would mark the second time that some dumb shit me and Infernal have been a part of has been patched shortly after. <laughs> yep. And I'm, it is, it, it's, oh god, it's too, too funny. But yeah, so the, so yeah, so in, in our first encounter of when we learned that it was a mistake to down the health bar so low, of what I was originally explaining, because like I said, it's it's so much to blur into one. Mm -hmm. Um, the the boss skipped to its final phase, but we were not. So the final phase is the boss just being out and about, and you're maneuvering against enemies and it and doing damage until it's over. Well, since we didn't do the cage up, cage down, cage up, cage down part, we had to still do that 
And because we still had to do that, the boss was running around with immunity. We could not touch it until the shield came down. Nah, 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 nah. Can't touch this. And which normally isn't a problem because it's in the cage stationary and you can, you know, hide or, you know, avoid the attacks coming from one direction. It's very problematic when you have to stand in one location and there's a boss stomping around and shooting you in the back with a laser gun. Because in order to stay alive, you have to move away from him, as per logic dictates. But you can't stand on the certain spot if you're not there. So it was a lot of screaming and a lot of coordination that somehow came together of us basically swapping the aggro between each other so that we could move the stupid wall away so we could finish the job that we started so blatantly early in the beginning of that mission. Um, and I feel like they even patched that out where we couldn't even do that again. Like, at, um, when they kicked you out, even when it rotated back through with Solar, like, we still hit it with all three, and it didn't take it as low. I don't know, because, like, I I don't know if it was because they patched it or we just knew better. Um, uh, maybe. I might say we, we learn from our mistakes. At least one of us has to. Because I can't. Because we don't. <laughs> the fact of the matter is we don't at all. Not in the slightest. Uh, so, since we're talking about Destiny still. We... we I, I need the, the listeners to send me vast amount of messages on my Instagram. Dragon's Fury. 93. Uh, I think it's 93. Did I put the 93 in there? Let me check. Yes. I put the 93 in there. Know who he is. I'm old. And tell Infernal that keeping the amount of weapons Pack. and armor that he has in his vault is unhealthy. <laughs> it is not unhealthy. <laughs> yes, it is. They have literally discontinued so I... many of those weapons <laughs> to the point that you can no longer improve them. You have to get an updated copy. Like, the original creation of those weapons and armor no longer exists. That if you were to ever delete them, they would never come back, which I know is your argument now of keeping them. But before we got to that point... Bro, how, dare you, how dare you shit talk my museum? It's a museum now. It was a museum then, too. You have so much... You should not be scrolling for six pages looking for one item because it's organized in a certain way. And you just have to get to that page. I mean, hey, when you have various uh, weapons and armors uh, with uh, different roles and or just uh, looks nice, uh, you don't want to get rid of them. Again. Especially the old ones, you don't want to get rid of them. Th this is old. It's only viable now because you know they're they're antique. They're spe they're like rare cards at this point. But you didn't know that then. You also have a card problem too. But we're not going to talk about that. I'm getting better. Oh my god, guys, you heard it here first. <laughs> the first step is admitting you have a problem. We're making headway. I'm so proud of him. Yeah, shut up, old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, Jesus. It's so <laughs> like, it's, it's bad when, like, my accounts exist that long. But, like, the fact that you have so 
mini the only reason i have so many items in there is that i just don't have the patience to go through and delete them all i'm lazy that's my crutch i'm just really really lazy because <laughs> i don't well every time i go into my vault and i'm looking for something i hate it if it wasn't for the app i would have stopped playing destiny completely not like the i'm stopping to play because it's sh like it's shitty story-wise or whatever and i come back for like a really nice outfit no i would just stop entirely because i would not be able to get through any of my inventory effectively and it would just put me off the game entirely and it's not the game's fault it's purely for the fact that i am extremely lazy yep it is unfortunate same with my Skyrim inventory. And I actively try to get rid of that stuff. Mm. That one's less of laziness and more of the game itself can't handle the fact that I have so many things that there's not enough money in the game. Speaking of a um, game that just can't handle everything, uh, one of my friends, Spitfire, uh, I forget if I've told you though. I'm pretty sure I have. Uh, he is a, a very big fan of the Fallout series. And he loaded up his Fallout 3 uh, to show me a thing. He goes to his uh, apartment in Nuketown. If anyone played Fallout 3, you know where that is. It's like the first town you visit. He proceeds to open up a singular storage. Five minutes later, the game loads everything. He had one of everything that's in the game in that one container. That, no, that's not okay. <laughs> that's not okay. Like, it, it was something. It was, honestly, it was impressive. <laughs> that is, that is not, not okay. I mean, yes, but also... It's one of those things of developers have a particular limit in mind. And they set that limit thinking that no one is in their right minds going to do this thing that's going to reach the limit. And to be fair, that's a safe assumption. But I think within the, like the past 10 years there has just been this trend of gamers and like of hardcore at all levels hardcore sweat meat lockers to i forgot i had that game casual players that they want to limit test all the time and it could be like in a benign fashion where it only affects you or in a very malicious fashion where it affects everybody. And it is baffling to me that people are figuring this thing out. Like, for example, um, I watch these videos on uh, 2B2T, which is dubbed the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. Oh, Jesus. The stuff that these people have pulled on each other, the machines that they have made, the exploits that they have used against each other, or in a certain, like, in spawn to just keep other people out. Like, the only way you get in is if you were already in. And essentially, the only way to even, like, exist on that server, from what I've seen, is to have literally all of the mod, like, all of the hacks just active where you can basically just have anything and everything you need at any given point and even that won't keep you alive because it's a battle it's almost just like a battle of hackers of seeing whose hacks are better and who has better yeah, exploits I would, I would and it is <laughs> wild to me and what that that idea that's always like lurking in the back of my mind is how how do you get to this point my dog just farted right behind me 
Oh my goodness. <sighs> this yeah, that's disrespectful. How, that, that, that's, how, that's how we get to that point. Yeah, it's just I do it because I can kind of deal, I guess. I can't believe he did that. He literally just <laughs> stood up, looked out the window, and then ripped one. Oh my god. So terrible. This is how I know he loves my wife more. Because I'm pretty sure he, he hasn't done that to her. Or maybe he has. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you. And then this is also why we can't let him on the bed anymore. Because he'll always <laughs> go put his butt on pillows. <sighs> Jesus. Um, if you don't know about Zuko, listen to the We Love Our Pets episode and you will get to uh, know about Zuko. And so, yeah, it what well, the amount of things that people have figured out that they can do and how to, like, break a game. And, like, like recently, the – I'm pretty sure you saw it – the biscuit thing on League. No, I did not know about this. Yo, okay, it was – dude, this was wild. I kind of wish I knew about it so I could, like, do it secretly but not, like, overtly because – I have a serious problem with not having enough mana for fights because I'm in fights for so long because I have the logic to stay away from danger and not pick fights that I'm not guaranteed to win. That is so you won't, you won't know until you try. So the the bug that was going on and there's two parts to this, it's freaking hilarious. So the bug that apparently came to be was that so you know what the biscuits do, right? Okay, so, right, they, so people were selling the biscuits and then undoing it, so it obviously comes back to the inventory, but in doing so, it was permanently increasing mana, so they were just spam selling and unselling their biscuits and getting stupid amounts of mana. And so they're just like sitting there, just spamming sell, unsell, sell, undo, sell, undo, sell, undo, until they have like 5,000 mana at like level two. Because you get biscuits early. This is hot patch, right? <laughs> uh, we're getting there. So that that was the exploit. was like, and so to my point, how do you figure, how do you find out what made someone sell their biscuit because the whole reason of using biscuit delivery is to be able at least in my opinion is to be able to sustain yourself longer in lane to get a leg up against your opponent if they have to back after all their mana is gone you don't necessarily have to back as soon which means more xp potentially more gold if you know unless you're bad at csing like i am and you know then yeah, it's... I, feel, I feel like the, uh, someone found out about this because they accidentally sold the biscuit and saw that they could undo the sell. Right. And then they just noticed that the the bug you're talking about, they noticed it and they're like, oh. Like, my numbers went up a little bit. And then, they, like, I that seems like to be the only logical thing, honestly. Because then they are like, oh, wait a minute. Did I see that right? They do it again, and it keeps going. And then, then they just start spamming it. But, so, so that was happening a lot. Like, and it was, like, egregious. People were just sitting in Fountain doing it. And then would come play the game. Like, it was bad, right? So... The hot, the hot fix comes out, right? So tell me why it does the reverse. What do you mean? So instead of gaining mana, if you did that, it would take mana away. That is how it should be. But permanently. Like, it was... <laughs> you bye could. Bye, <laughs> it literally was by bye, bye And so someone was showing that it was like... Because they were like testing to see if the bug was still a thing because people were like forfeiting games because they people were exploiting this and they were like i'm not playing until this is fixed so they were this was in practice tool so they were doing the test right zero mana they literally had zero mana all right auto attack let's go <laughs> it, it was like oh my god so but because you know because it's isn't it permanent boost in mana um for the game 
to be honest, like I didn't think it like it, like because when it came to biscuit, like I know it restored mana. I didn't know it actually increased mana until you just started displaying those. Uh, um, hold on, let me let me check. But this. I think I think I think it is a permanent uh, change to your mana pool. I literally put biscuit delivery uh league of legends and then it said bug was the next thing um and then of course and then the next video was like don't take biscuit delivery but that was from like last year so that was for a different reason um okay let's see here passive receive a total biscuit available the lasting will at two four and six then if you reach fulls by receiving the biscuit the biscuit will appear as soon as this hot is available consuming the biscuit will instantly restore 40 mana and permanently increase your maximum mana yeah so since it was doing the reverse it was decreasing the amount of mana you could ever have so honestly, someone zeroed out <laughs> honestly like i am okay with that because it's like if you were trying to exploit this say goodbye to your mana <laughs> oh yeah no definitely but it was one of those things that it was it's just like they figured it out like in practice tool because they were trying to make sure the bug didn't exist anymore but the fact that your version of fixing something was to make it worse because god forbid oh, no, someone they it worse they made it better no because now people it's one of those things of the people who ruined it didn't ruin it for themselves the ones who are using exploits and bugs aren't ruining it for themselves they're ruining it for everyone else that doesn't use the exploit because i've i've sold biscuits because i was doing better than i expected so it's just taking up inventory and i don't need it so uh, or crazy. i was behind and then but again it was like you're behind or whatever and then it's like bot you just sell it or whatever and so you could just be innocently selling or whatever and it's like hey look now i'm gone like i've lost mana entirely i was like this is this is crap but that's like with all of the items, like anything that gets bugged where you're trying to fix something that you did on mistake and because it's bugged again because they were trying to fix it, now you're punished for it. What was, what I mean? uh, what was it? Like the ASOL thing? That was stupid. Oh, yeah. Like the person who found that out completely did it by accident. They were just facing the wrong way. And then they literally couldn't play the game with an ability for the rest of it. Bye guys. Like this, this freaking sucks. Like it's freaking terrible. I, I yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, in all honesty, it really comes down to Riot needing to get a new client. Yeah. Because the spaghetti code that this current client is running off of is uh, probably partially the reason for a lot of these bugs. <laughs> I totally and wholeheartedly believe it. Uh, but yeah. All right, so let's see here. Okay, we're coming up on, we got like 20 minutes left before this gets way too long of an episode. And they've already been subjected to this enough as is. But hopefully they're enjoying it to some extent. So the next thing I wanted to talk about that came to mind literally yesterday um, while I was driving in the work, which means it was like six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Early. Uh, when this came to mind was your first bonus bonus content and to quantify this question i mean the first uh item uh, uh you know mission or icon or whatever it may be first thing you got that was due to you doing something special for it like oh you were playing the game at 12 o'clock on a full moon on a wednesday like <laughs> like those kind of things like you got you got a special thing for doing a specific task that was a limited time thing um and particularly predating the current idea of dlcs so by like but like back when DLCs were actually DLCs where you already had the full game and then you know you buy the bonus content but more so of you know free if possible but like if you bought your first thing then obviously you buy your first thing but do you remember what your first bonus content was 
Um, I don't know if it would count as bonus content. Well, actually, I don't think it would count. Because the first thing I can think of that this comes to mind probably doesn't meet the right requirements was the oh God, well, it was like the eradicator weapon from Ratchet and Clank. I'm trying to remember the actual name of the gun. Basically, it was a weapon that I I forget if you could get this in your first playthrough or not. I just didn't remember it being stupid expensive. But this gun, no, oh, the Rhino. That's what it was called. I always like to call it the Eradicator because literally you you press the button and anything in the visible area of the level gets just disintegrated. Gone though. Yeah, no, like that was <laughs> like yeah, I think it was right. No, no, not the right. God damn it! I'm, I'm actually looking this up right now because I I want to remember the weapon's name. Um, but yeah, but if we're going for like DLC, that at least comes to mind. Um, honestly, I'd have to go like Dog Dark or Dragonborn for Skyrim. Yeah, that was my first like DLC DLC, but. My first bonus content goes even further back, and it comes from a place that just dates how old I am. Farmville. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it was a, a collaboration with Lady Gaga. She had released, like, three singles, I think that and i don't even I th I'm, I'm sure you can find it like on like apple music or something like that but there was like three it was a whole event that you had to play for like i think you had to play x amount of time and send you know the infamous uh game invites to your friends or something along those lines. You, you basically had to actively play Farmville, right? Mm. And then when you did that during this event, you would unlock the link to the like the special area for that, that they set up, and it gave you the download for the single. And so, and then I think it was like a, another one was like a cover photo like you know like the time when we you know changed a profile like you had a cover photo and this big old yeah. picture you had to cross your banner and it was that in the and the song was called marry the night and i was obsessed with this song and i'm if i'm i feel like it played in game too like it was like a whole like a whole event thing and so that that was my like first bonus content was the song from Lady Gaga via Farmville, which I played way too much in everyone's opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had, like, droves on droves of, like, lands and, like, crops and stuff. Like, it was... Farmville was the original idol game before that was even a genre. <laughs> mm. And so, like, you would you would come in, you do your stuff, you plant all your plants and your crops, you come back, like, like, the next day or a day and a half, harvest it all, do it all again, spam all of your friends with invites for, for helping to speed up the times that for your crops because they would start taking days to complete because you were at such a high level like it was it was a time um it was a time it existed uh for those who are too young or too old for that matter uh to <laughs> to know about it uh yeah i I forget. Was there anything like that for uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon? I never got into Roller Coaster Tycoon, so I couldn't tell you. Okay. Yeah, like the most I ever played Roller Coaster Tycoon was basically in the school computer lab, 
Uh, obviously, most of us at that time did not know how to truly play that, so most of the time we either bankrupted our, uh, our uh, amusement parks or just made roller coasters that uh, went nowhere. Yeah, it was definitely something like, yeah, I never, I couldn't even tell you why I didn't play roller coaster tycoon i don't even think it was a matter of it didn't interest me because i vividly remember seeing like the boxes of the cd roms on like the shelves again at school um and i just i just never made an effort to to play it so yeah couldn't couldn't tell you it was definitely a lot um what else? I know there's other stuff. Um, like, the... I know that there were like some secret po Pokemon ones, but I I cannot remember those. Uh, another oh here here's a fun. Nintendo basically just made a whole like budget plan. Of sorry, I thought he was snoring. Um, the of the idea that uh, of bonus content essentially, and it was amiibos. Yeah, I, I can see that. They they just they were they made games where it's like, hey, we and they did it they did it sly too. They did it so sly because they re they released Skylanders. That was that the was flagship. That was the flagship. Of the technology of amiibos was skylanders and you had your portal and all that like that game was so much fun um and yeah, i know magma had a bunch of skylander stuff and yeah i ended up giving like all mine to my little cousin after i had stopped playing uh because it was like and this is this is proof that my nickname of father of yordles it was not just like randomly given to me because from just playing league like i've i maxed out trigger happy first i don't know if you remember what he looked like let's just give him a quick google search trigger happy yeah trigger happy the skylander Oh god, that prick, that weird little thing. Tell me that is not a pre a pre-evolutionary yordle. Yeah, no. That yeah. looks like Nar's yeah. demented cousin. It's like Nar and Zig fused. <laughs> but he was he was like my first one I maxed out. Like he was the first one that I made. That's it. Like the highest level was him. And this was before they, like, gave, like, the redos, like, where they made them again. And, like, it was like, oh, it was, like, Trigger Happy 2.0. Because he's literally, he literally shot cogs at you. Like, he just, just junk. He was literally a furry junk rat. <laughs> also, the, uh, Gilgrunt. Like all of, like the base the base people you started with for the game and then I just started, you know, collecting the other types of people. Because it it was that was such like a unique game. And I'm I'm sad it fell off the way it did, but like I'm also glad with how it like progressed through. Because they made like two games and they ended up making a show. That's right. I just forgot they made a show of that. Um, the uh, I, the, the I, elf I, that I was still... a collie, and then the actual Ziggs, which was yeah. the the goblin. <laughs> yeah, I I still wasn't a fan of how they made Spyro look in Skylanders. Ah, uh, he wasn't the best looking. Cause like, my version of uh Spyro is, cause my first Spyro game was um. God, uh, Entry of the Dragonfly, I think is what it was called. Basically, you have to go to all the realms and find dragonflies. Mm. Oh, 
Now I think about it, that was another game I never finished. Got stuck on a freaking level. Like, yeah, I definitely, I definitely didn't get into Spyro. It, again, nothing of it's like, oh, I don't like dragons. It's like, no, it was just not my, not my style. I was, I was very like, it was almost very neat. Like I was a niche gamer essentially. Like what the games I did play were kind of like the. I was playing them before they they popped off. Because, like, I remember playing Skylanders before, like, anyone even knew what that was. And then, like, people would come over and it was like, oh, my God, like, this is fun. And I was like, yeah. And so everything that triggered this. So then Amiibos come out, right? And they started giving, you know, the extra, like, you can have your character in the game if you had the Amiibo. And they started building into the, their games the, uh, the, this ability to bring in other characters and it was totally off of the, I'm pretty sure it was off of like Skylanders as being its fi flagship of people interacting with those types of uh, items. I could be completely off base and like Skylanders came after Amiibos, but I just feel like I remember Sky uh, Skylanders first and then Amiibos kind of like really took off of like showing up for various games and that you would get and save like save stuff to it so you could don't go play the game with like your friend um mm -hmm. on their game you could bring it over and stuff like that so it was it was very very interesting so that that definitely was like bonus content for sure so it it looks like you know uh skylanders looks like that was released in 2011 the first wave of amiibos wasn't until three years later okay so i'm not crazy for that reason yet so they definitely <laughs> yet <laughs> paved the way for that technology to take off because i mean i like i said i gave all my stuff to my my uh cousin so i i knew it was still going on because he was like he was way younger than me um and you know 11 i graduated so that was some time ago um so yeah it was it was it was it was great like i really skylanders is the reason why like certain things when people like go through it's like oh it's like yeah look at this unique thing or no skylanders had unique uh characters like obviously you had spyro spyro whatever but then you had a blind archer you had literally zeus you had like a magma titan you had you know a skeleton warrior you had a i'm zero bone and you had, you had a sentient like tank uh you had basically early maokai or later maokai i don't know <laughs> i don't know what he looked like then um you had like a street shark uh, it was there was so many unique things involved in the skylanders uh, universe and then you know they get money grubbing and then they start like making all this other stuff and it stopped being fun and that's essentially why i started just giving all of my stuff to him and he really benefited because since everything was saved on the you know the character itself he was basically op it's like when you take your low level friend through a yeah a dungeon for the first time and you they can't touch you that's essentially what it was because he had max uh, he had max characters and when he was first starting out it was it was good stuff it was it was good stuff so that being said I would like to wrap us up here, and uh, if you skipped over the beginning and or kind of zoned out, that was fun stuff. Oh, there you <laughs> To uh, check out those uh, socials, uh, you can uh, reach reach me for comment for commentary, suggestions, questions, what have you, on Instagram. We also do have. A reddit page for the show um i have posted various questions there for people to answer the reddit isn't popping off so it, we really need people to get on over there and check those out there's uh, different things and 
get that uh that area flowing uh, you can uh meet new people and you know really connect with us up here at uh the dip and uh you know get get more out of the uh experience as we progress through our uh our journey and to see where this uh, show takes us and what we can do um so j jump on board now before it's cool because you don't want to be that person you don't want to be like i liked them before they were cool <laughs> don't be that person hop on support us and then you can be a part of the team and then when other people be like you know yeah i knew them before they were popular and i was like well you did and we recognize that so you'll be with us the whole whole round so till the next one you can stay here but we aren't <laughs>